Hello everybody, it's a new Monday and we're back to the decks of the weekend. The deck that, I, the, the deck that I have in front of me is not a new deck. It's uh, the best deck of the format. It's been like that for a very long time, I want to say, and this weekend finally, um, I don't know, I guess the cards just aligned so that Grixis Shadow not only won every event that was around, it also just completely dominated the top eight. Let's start with uh, Nathan Stewart's success in the Mox uh, finals. So the tournament with eight people. It was both Cube and Modern. First and second place were two Grixis Shadow. Same list. They teamed together. This is the list. With two Turak in the main, only one Kroxa. Turak was mostly to attack the four-color Omnath deck uh, that was uh, played by other players, like Canister, for example. There's also another nice tech in Mind Grind, which is here for another player that uh, often uh, played uh, Belcher. So uh, it's a three mana just mill uh, Belcher, so that's quite cool. But yeah, it's mostly Grixis Death Shadow. The next day, there was a, a modern challenge, and Grixis Shadow once again won and dominated with many people in the top eight. And then the day after, there was a PTQ with four Grixis Death Shadow in top four. Cory Balmaster unfortunately lost the uh, the semifinal, so didn't get the um, set championship invite. But yeah, so modern right now is in the hands of this deck. How can you beat it? What can you do to do to like try to fight it? Well, I think that uh, the card uh, Sanctifier um, Sanctifier in deck is of course uh, one of the sorry um, is of course one of the best uh, against it. Um, Hammer Time can play this, maybe humans. Um, not saying that humans is good against Grixis, I would never, but just saying that uh, this is uh, definitely one way to go. Um, you can see two Pirate Spell Bomb and of course two Dress Down. No Engineer, uh, sorry, and three Engineer Explosives, of course. And um, although Corey, I think Corey played zero Engineered Explosives, I'm pretty sure about that. That's definitely a thing that caught my attention. And then of course you got Veil of Summer or the Good Old Burn. Burn is obviously not that bad against uh, Grixis Shadow. You can always draw a lot of that Shadow and beat the Burn decks, but I think um, Burn could be the way to, to beat this deck. Of course, you don't really want to play Burn sometimes when you play Modern, so uh, that's still, of course, one way why Grixis Shadow keeps on winning. All right, let's go now to Magic Arena, where, of course, we had our uh, very many... Um, ways, uh, so-called the PTQ, so the Arena Qualifier. Uh, the first one that I want to highlight to you is this uh, standard one with a lot of people, 137, uh, was won by Izamichi Yoshigo on Grixis, on uh, Ors of Control, beating just Sky in the finals with uh, um, other decks such as Naya Runes in the top four with Simon Nielsen. That uh, We're going to read his name again, but yeah. The top eight of uh, standard, very diverse. Uh, some control decks with Ian Barber playing Azor's control, but yeah, Ors of Control is the deck that I'm going to highlight to you today because it plays a card that's really, really new, or not new, but I haven't seen it very much. It's Silver Quill Silencer. It's a three-two for two. That when it comes to the way you name a card and when you point and cast that card, you they lose three life and you draw a card. These events are played on MTG Melee, so they are open deck list. So whenever you play, you know your opponent deck list. And you can name, I don't know, you can name uh, the Wandering Emperor against the Blue Eye Control, or I don't know, you can name uh, um, a Braid against Izzet. You just read their deck and just name whatever you think they might uh, be casting against you. And this is a cheap threat together with Concealed Cortains and Luminar Aspirant, which of course puts the counter in begin combat. It's not alchemy. It's an aggro deck with Restoration of Engagio, Wending Announcement, and the Wandering Emperor, as well as Lolt. So it's really just a black-white mid-range deck. You have creatures on curve from 1 to 4, and uh, backed up by removal spells such as Vanishing Verse, Humiliate. This is a discard spell that pumps a creature. You have Inferno Grasp, the Mythic Massacre, of course, Aggro Mowling. And one Legion Angel with three in the side. You have three copies of Fear Well, which is one way to go against the Naya Runes deck that we're gonna see in Alchemy here because Naya Runes, Naya Runes did dominate Alchemy. 
there was a, a PTQ uh, made by uh, .gg uh, events, the MTG Arena uh, Open. Um, we got way, um, not 53, we got way more than that since the event was in um, a seven round event. Uh, my friend Upumpa uh, Tianfa Moon made top eight with blue white control, but I could not. Uh, not highlight the, 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 the strongest deck in the format, which is Naya Runes with uh, five copies in the top five. That's pretty dominant uh, performance by uh, Naya Runes. This is the deck, this is the best deck in Alchemy. It's a very proactive deck. Your goal is to um, stick a Generous Visitor, a Kami of Transcendence, a rune for champion and just load them up. Sorry, a Jukai Naturalist. Just load them up with rune of speed, rune of assistance. You have commune with spirits to pick up one of those runes, or mostly and more importantly, to pick up showdown the skulls, which is the way this deck goes off. You just get card advantage with your showdown of the skulls. There is a super sweet combo with the deck that is a rune for champion, making your rune cost one colorless, and Jukai Naturalist, making the rune cost one less. So you can just cast them for free. You have uh, Rune of Might, Rune of Speed, and Rune of Assistance, so the full 12. The deck is um, playing... All right, this list in particular doesn't have an enchantment that I have loved, which is... Uh, uh, I think it's something with the moon? No, what's the name? Hound. Which is Hallowed, Hount Hallowed Hunting. It's a four-man enchantment that makes you read very good against control, but I guess uh, uh, Simon Nielsen didn't expect control to be popular and uh, um, or that his matchup was just going to be good regardless because of your easy access to show down the skulls with the communal spirits. But yeah, that's that's definitely a card. You have Boseju and Engajo as your interactive lands and you have Forsaken Crossroads, the only alchemy um, type of card in the deck. So alchemy, so, there was a time where alchemy was very strong, very busted with uh, the Fearsome Well, Ptolemy's Tyrant, um, you know, Lier and Key to the Archive. So alchemy was this overpowered standard. Now, I think they took a very lazy approach to alchemy, which was to just nerf the good cards. So what happened is that you just now are, you, whatever you have left, which basically just standard, but without Lier and without Ghostbane Dragon, which makes the format... I'm not sure how appealing it makes it, but other than that, it just makes so that you don't have to run the alchemy only cards because they just keep on nerfing them and making them worse. I have already expressed my opinion on alchemy uh, many times. I'm gonna repeat myself here. I think that alchemy has a huge potential to be able to make uh, arena more appealing to the uh, digital only players, but I think it didn't really to execute well. They started with a million rare wild cards so that everybody would hate it. And even if the people, even the people that you know drafted a lot and had a lot of jams to buy the cards are just preferring standard to it because they just keep on nerfing whoever deck wins. So, and that's personally, that's not the magic I like to play. I like to play a deck, I like to win with it, and I keep, and if the deck is reasonable, I don't want it to be like nerfed the next month. So the approach to alchemy, I think it's really unbearable. Like they just keep on nerfing every card is doing well, making so that you're really just not incentivized doing well. Like I'll, I'll, unless you like, you know, winning these events to get the invite at the, at the PT. Of course, the people who are playing like Simon Nielsen, he doesn't really like, he doesn't care what's legal. He's just trying to win. And that's the same thing I'll do. And the same thing that many competitive players do, but I don't know. So this is more than the decks of the week and it just kind of became on... I think Alchemy had a huge um, power... No, what's the word? Um, I could have been great and the execution has not been what I wanted to see. What I would love to see because very easily in Magic people complain and never really say what or why should be changed. So I'd like to both complain and say what and what should be changed. And I think uh, they should definitely lower the amount of uh, cards they nerf in a negative way so just don't necessarily if a card that's doing well don't actually uh, nerf it just wait to see how the metagame does 
And also, just print less rare cards in the next alchemy set. Please, please, please. Or just make them draftable. Or just whatever. Because if you're releasing... If you're going to release with the new batch of uh, alchemy-only cards in Kamigawa, infinite rares, I think it's just going to be a nail in the coffin. So yeah, that's it for my uh, Monday time to just uh, privately talk. It's not privately. Publicly talk with my YouTube uh, viewers. Thank you for watching in these uh, in these weeks. I really had uh, um, a lot more views than I uh, initially thought at the beginning of the year. I'm very happy. I'm gonna keep on making YouTube content every day, twice a day, for uh, yeah, as much as I can keep up. So yeah, please uh, subscribe to the channel, write a message if you want, whenever you want. I'm always um, answering a comment if it's uh, interesting. Have a good day.